All right, today we got we got T stacks. Yeah, how, how you doing? doing? How you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. Good, good. I think we'll start with the socials. What's the... Uh... Yeah, mine is Mr. Underscore Stacks Underscore 1000 on Instagram. TJ Stacks Facebook. They're the only socials I really use. Um, I'm not really a social guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, oh, fair enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to use more socials, though. I'm starting to get the hang of it. And uh, it's, it's a bit difficult. I'm not... The algorithms. Yeah, I'm yeah. good with it and that. I'm making all the captions and... Yes, I'm, I'll get there. It's all good. It's all all right, good. so your Instagram says independent artist, not rapper. Yeah, I'm what? an artist, not a rapper. Obviously, rappers, they're, they're, that's just one department. I mean? see, yeah. I don't, I don't put myself in my department. So I, I do, my genre is always different. Every track I release is different. So the, the beat's different, the wording's different, the flow's different. I, I try and Keep it different. So sometimes we'll be singing, sometimes we'll be rapping. All oh, right. Obviously, I can dance as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's all you good. dance as well. Yeah, I, done, okay, done, I didn't know I done, that. I done dance. I done street dance in school and that. Um, and then obviously I done out of school. I took some classes for dance and that as well. Never really went nowhere with it and that. I went to other things, but yeah. <laughs> what what kind of dance is that? Um, just like hip hop and street dance, really. That yes. was that was just that was mainly it. Mainly it. But to be fair, I, I, I'm trying to, I, I well, I've always wanted to do that Italian dancing, you know, like that. Like what? Dulces and that. Oh, so? Yeah, you know, them, them, <laughs> them proper dancing. I'm trying to get something like that, but maybe I'll, I'll start looking into it. Can you, can you salsa roll? Nah. Oh, you haven't tried That's it? That's what I'm saying. I, I would love to, but yeah. nah. I'll tell you what, there's a place up in central London. I think it's called Salsa, where everyone goes and you could just... You just go there, vibe, oh, bro. Like, yeah, good still, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to hear. It. Take the misses and go. It's good. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. Try it. I might have to try it. I might have to try it. All right. So we carry on from the profile. So it's raised in London, now lives in Kent. Yeah. So obviously, mum was born in that in Lewisham. Obviously, raised in Lewisham and that went mm. to school. Um, my primary school was in New Cross. So in um, I went Edmund Waller Primary School, just on Waller yeah. Road in New Cross. Obviously, moved out of New Cross to Lewisham. And then from Lewisham to Catford and that, and then I went to Sedge Hill in Sydenham. That was my secondary school. Yes. And Ooh. then obviously I got kicked out of Sedge Hill. What did you get kicked out for? Just for madness. Um, basically, man beat up one you, and then the police come into the school. Yeah. And then I got like one of them, it was like temporary excluded things. And then I come back and then something else happened. <laughs> and then I got permanently excluded. Then they moved me from there. And then... um. I didn't go to school for a little while and that and then I got in mad trouble. And then obviously my mum was like, I'm moving you out of London because the police basically the police said to her, if you either gotta move or your son's gonna end up in jail or dead mm -hmm. and that. And then it was like the last warning and she was all panicking and yeah. that and then she moved, man. And then but I was I was always back to my nans and that in New Cross and to and from in and that. So I weren't really away from it. And then yeah, I, I originally Properly stayed in Kent from like when I turned like sixteen. I ended up staying in Kent from there, and then um yeah. What what year was it? You got kicked out though. I got kicked out in year nine. Yeah, in year, year nine. Damn. Year nine, and then I never went to school after that. I went to school in one other school, and then I was there for two months, and then they kicked me out for um robbing phones in the changing rooms. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was robbing phones in the changing rooms. Um on some scumbag days but yeah was that just for that that was just like you know like you're young and... yeah like you're yeah. young dumb and that you just think yo i need some change in that like yeah and obviously i was bunking in the change room and then um, i was with one of my guys and then he was like yo let's just let's see what they got and that so i was like yo, all right see no more and then um yeah i got nicked for that and then they kicked me out of school and then obviously I said to my mum, I was like, I ain't going to school. So I never went back to another school after that. Yeah. They put me in as like homeschooled. Well, they said I was homeschooled, but I wasn't homeschooled, innit? And then obviously I never had no GCSEs, nothing. That's fair enough. So yeah, that was that was it. And then I've just been in Kent since then and just been doing things in Kent. So yeah, I was raised in that in London, but I'm Kent. I'm Kent now, man. I enjoy <laughs> it. I enjoy it. Where where about in Kent? You don't mind me asking. So like I'm always in like Dartford and that, but All right, yeah. um, at the minute, my mum's moved to um, Rochester. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. So it's nice down there. Yeah. Like, historic and that. You know what I mean? 
it's historic, so it's good. Um, quiet, a lot quieter than Lewisham. Different, yeah. obviously, I got kids now, so it's better for them, and that you know what I mean. Um, yeah, it's a good little area. Would you would you raise your, raise your kids in London, or you prefer not? I'll, to be honest, I want to move back and that, but I don't feel like until they're at a certain age. Get me, they're young now. Whereas I would rather them. If I was gonna do it, that I have to wait till they get like secondary school. Mm. My nose like, right, they're, they're ready. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm put them in there now. Nah, you get me. Yeah, that's my little kids, and I'm not trying to get them all messed up. But when you hit yeah. a certain age, their, their minds already sort of made. Do you know what I mean? And they know what path they're sort of going down. So maybe if they hit like 10, 11, we'll see. See what happens. Nah, well, fair enough. Um, to be honest, I was having this discussion the other day. And I was saying, you know, I probably wouldn't because of how London is. Yeah. And the guy that I was talking to turned around and goes, you know, but they won't be streetwise. But that's what I'm saying. That's mm. that's why I'm that's why I'm two miles, because as much as it's like I don't want them to, but it's it's not just the streetwise thing, it's the opportunities, mm. the, the things that are here in London. That's true, yeah. Do you know, once you move out, a lot of people still want to come work in London, but they don't live in London. Mm. That's the travel. That's the, the, the became, it then becomes more and more of a of a myth to do that. Do you know what I mean? So people ain't trying to do that, and it's like I can't travel there. But if you're in the heart of it and you're there, you're 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 mixing with people, you're networking, you're linking up. Do you get me? It's easier to either make a career in NHS plumbing, whatever you want to do, or music, whatever you want to do. Mm. There's people in London that can network you to that. If when you start moving out, it's like in Kent, there's not many things for music or nothing like that. There's no networking, there's no nothing. Yeah. So, gee, that's why I'm sort of like, depending on what my kids want to do, depending on how they are, depends on if I ever come back to London fully like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And and what about your own opportunities? Do you, do you find my own opportunities? Really I found it harder, in it. Obviously, man done music when I was young, and I stopped it from obviously my own reasons. Um, yeah. man, man got in trouble, man done the road thing and done things that were just putting me away from music and then I forgot about music really and it's only when the last year man's really started it back up and that but yeah that there's no opportunities for man there wasn't when I moved to Kent that like, only opportunity was making money and that you, you either make money or you don't and you're going to be sitting broke with the crackheads do you know what I mean yeah I'm not trying yeah. to do that all right so talking about music now is that is that what you do full-time or now nah, obviously full time I got um my plumbing business and that. Nice. So I do plumbing and that as well. Um obviously I do a bit of trading here and there, nothing major. And just follows my brethren sort of stuff and that. Um Is that online trading? Yeah, yeah, okay. online trading. Or like so, Forex and all that. Yeah, Forex obviously man just, I copy his his trades, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, nice, yeah. And then um, <laughs> I just eat off that. Um but yeah, just, I've started that and then obviously my plumbing and that, I do that. But music, like I say, it's only been the last year man's really started putting effort into me and trying to do music and trying to prosper more in the music. Mm. Like, I don't make money from music. It's not bringing me money. I just do it for fun. But obviously, hopefully we will start making some money from music. But at the moment, I've done it for fun. I stopped it from young because... I had things going on and the, I think the passion of for it has just come back and it's got to the point where man's like, I can't just leave it now, innit? I'm getting old, I'm getting older. Mm. If I either do it now or I don't, do you get me? And it's, I've sort of set myself a goal. If it ain't patterned in five years, the man's going to leave it, you know what I'm saying? Is it? So, yeah. Like, <laughs> do, you think, do you think older rappers are a bit a bit corny or what do you think? I don't know. Like, to, well, if it, if it's, is it that the fact that if you're older and you haven't made it? Is that what it is? I, I think it could be that it's, it's in my eyes. I've always done things young, innit? So yeah. I had kids young, I done this young, like I have, I have my business young, I, I done things young. So in my I want to do it young. I don't want to be old. I want to have it now. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And when I'm old, I just want to relax. That's the way I see it. So I, in my eyes, I don't know if that's how other people see it. They may see it as corny or whatever, but you. You, you're never too old to get where you want to go to. Mm. You get me? No one can ever tell that to you. Like you're, you're never too old to get where you want to. But in my eyes, I don't want to be old and having to work hard mm. and graft and get to where I want to be. I want to be there. I'm at my young ages. You get me? I'm in my youth. I want to get there now. Like so. Yeah, that's the way I see it. 
No, fair enough. Um, with your plumbing business, do you, is it, do you, are you a plumber yourself then? Or? Yeah, yeah, I've done plumbing. So obviously I started an apprenticeship when I was 15. Nice. It was meant to be, um, obviously I dropped out of school, I had no GCSEs. My mum patted me apprenticeship through someone she knew. And I was like, yes, winning. <laughs> Um, and obviously my dad's a plumber, a gas engineer. So I was like, oh, like, I've always thought, he told man, get a trade, you'll be set your life. Duh, duh, duh. And then yeah. old man, do you get me, them geezer stuff. I was like, all right, mate, whatever. Got to having no G, like got to getting kicked out of school, no GC. I thought, shit, like, I'm fucked. Like, mm. Get me, if, if in, the, in all things fails what I'm doing now, and I like, completely, I lose everything. Yeah. What have I got? I have nothing. So I was like, yo, I need to do something. So I was just turning 16 and then I was pestering my mum. I'm like, yo, like, you taught me something. She said, like, I can get your apprenticeship for a plumbing thing. And I always said to everyone, like, if I will be a plumber, innit? Because my dad was a plumber. When you're young, everyone always says they're going to be a fireman, they're going to be this. Yeah. My dad's a plumber, so I was going to be a plumber, bro. You get me? That's what I was saying. I'm going to be a plumber. So that's what I always had in my mind. So when she said, oh, she can get me that apprenticeship, I was like, I'm in, I'm in. And it was meant to be a two-year course. Mm. But I was so locked in, I finished it in 30 months. I finished yeah. my um, college course before everyone else. Smashed out my portfolio before everyone, like it was done. Do you know what right. I mean? So yeah. I was in. By the time I was just turning 17 and just got my license, I was out on the road in a van doing my oh, thing. Yeah. Like, but obviously, I lost the job through my DBS record. Man, I had drugs and shit on my record. Oh, when it came back? come back so I lost that but obviously by then I'd already qualified so it was like yo I'm uh oh you're already a plumber yeah yeah, yeah. A plumber, <laughs> you know what I mean so I went and got another job for another company and then just built it up from there and then went off and done my own thing self-employed get me done my own shit and that yeah. and just built it up like yeah like I said I locked in like it was more of a thing I got to where man was doing the thing on the road and whatever I, like I was still doing that on the side and but it was like I need something to guarantee me, like, if yeah, like hell backup. spells, yeah, that yeah. I need this. Yeah. And that was that. Do you know what I mean? So, would you, would you recommend people get a trade? Yeah, still? definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Because not only that, it's good to be hands on. Yeah. Like, getting up in the, even the routines, just getting up in the morning, going to, going somewhere, doing something, making sure you're having a lunch at a certain time. Like, them routines there, they helped me a lot. Yeah. It helped me a lot because I used to just sleep till two in the afternoon, <laughs> like do stupid shit. Yeah, you know I mean, so them routines there they helped. They helped a lot, especially with your mental health and your mind and that. Yeah, you know I mean, so yeah, it's good. And what, would you recommend like a young person going for a for a? Um... I recommend them going for any sort of trade. To be honest, it, but don't go for it just because people are telling you to go for it. Mm. Go for it and see if you like it. But go an apprentice is good. Apprenticeships? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. If, 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 if you're interested in that side of the, the business, then definitely go for, and try an apprenticeship. But apprenticeships ain't for everyone. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They're not for everyone. Like, don't get me wrong, I come from chilling with olders all the time, being with people on the roads and that. And when I got my first apprenticeship and the geezer was shouting at man on the site, I was thinking, bro, who are you talking to? <laughs> yeah, like, I can imagine. Yeah. Are you crazy? Like, but you have to hold it. And if you haven't got that, like for a few times I got told off, like, who are you talking to like that? Oh, like you're talking to me like that. What are you talking? But that's your boss. You get me? Yeah, it's hierarchy. Yeah, you have to realize. <laughs> and then it's things like that. So unless you really want to be doing that job, don't I don't see people wanting don't sign up for something that you don't want to do, in it. It's the mm. same with anything. Don't if you if you don't really want to do that or you're not interested in learning, why are you gonna sign yourself up to that? I was interested in it, in it. So I and I knew I had to do something. So that's why I signed myself up for that. But unless you're interested, I wouldn't advise anyone signing up for something they won't want to sign up for. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? How, how would you describe your personality? I, I'm chill. Like, I don't know. I'm just chill. I'm calm, humble, chill. I'm, I'm just me, innit? Like, I don't change no matter if I'm in a room with my mum, my nan, or the mandem. I'm still the exact same person. So cool. I'm just chill. Like, I speak what comes out my mind, isn't it? Whatever's on my head right then is coming out my mind that I don't have no filter or nothing. I'm mean, just there. Is what it is. Yeah, I get you. Um, is your latest song is Anxiety? Yeah, that's my latest. The latest one I've dropped. Yeah. Yeah, latest um, the, yeah. yeah so that one's doing well. So we just hit 100, over 100K in a month. Coming nice. up two months now. 
Where's, where's that streams on? OSM. OSM channel, yeah. man. OSM Visions channel. Yeah. And YouTube, yeah? Yeah, YouTube, yeah. OSM Visions. Big respect, man. All my, all my music's on there so far. Um, I'm just going to keep building, man. Obviously, keep dropping it on the channel. People need to subscribe to the channel. You know Come what I'm on. saying? So, yeah, yeah it's, it's just, it's, it's doing well. It's doing well. Nice, nice. Um, what are you working on at the moment, music wise? Because I, I think you recorded something today as well. Can we talk about that or not yet? Yeah, um, we got a little, we got a little shoot that we done today. Um, with Old Dot, obviously. Come on. So yeah. yeah, that's gonna go well. Um, that should be dropping in a few weeks. That's nobody. A little freestyle called Nobody for you. Um, mm. so that's more of a little, more up tempo, more so he's like more. You could call it drill, but it's not drill. You get me like. Mm. I, I, I really, I'm not really a dual person. Um, just that's more violence and that out like that. Fair enough. Yeah. So, but yeah, I got that, and then I got Charlie's Angels coming. That one's dropping on OSM hopefully next week. Nice. Um. So yeah, there's a few coming. Um. Stay tuned, man. They're gonna be good ones. What What inspires your music? Or what's What's your music most? My music just comes from me. Like so, if. I'm sitting there and I'm just thinking of my emotions or I'm thinking about what man went through or something yeah. might come through or I'll, I'll like have a deja vu thing or when I see something and I remember that I've done that or and it's like, oh, that will put me in a little reminiscent and then I end up sitting there thinking, I just need to write about that and mm. then I'll find the beat and then I'll just write about it. Like, but I don't talk to no one. Like, okay, I don't right. talk to my missus, I don't talk to... My mom, I don't talk to no one about any of my problems really. I never have done. I've always okay. been very quiet. Do you get me? Like not about like about anything. That like, could be the slightest little thing, but I just I won't tell you. You like you'll find out over social or something. All oh, right. I'll post it before I tell anyone. Is that how you kind of express yourself? Yeah, well, that's that's your yeah. So it. so yeah. my music is whatever I'm thinking at that time, but I don't want to really tell no one at that time. Yeah. We'll write it there and then and then I'll probably release it a bit later. Okay, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but that's just what inspired my music. Just whatever is on my mind, whatever's I've been through, whether it's me, my friends, my family, then I just go with that. It's all quite genuine. This yeah, thing. yeah. Every every one of my tunes is I've not there's nothing you can there's no one that can say that none of my tunes I've not done in it. Like it's not been me, I've not lived it, like it's not come from a real situation. Mm. That that's I will not. I can't write about something that I haven't seen or done or witnessed or been involved in because I don't know about it. And yeah, that, I like I said, I, anything like I said earlier, anything that I do it comes off the top of my brain. It's what I know. So unless I know it, <laughs> I yeah. can't say it. Like, <laughs> and that's just the way my brain functions. It's it's weird. Um, yeah, it's hard to explain. I, I don't really sit there and think. Oh, I'm going to start writing today. Mm. It's just a random, could be completely random. Comfortable. Like we could leave after this and then I could be like, sure, I got, I got to write this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's literally it. So what's the most favorite song that you've ever wrote? That I've wrote? Yeah. What's your favorite song? Uh, all of them. To be honest, I don't really, I don't really know. Um, there's not many of them that I actually really groove to and I like myself. Like a lot of them I've released because people was like, release them release mm. them like and they're good like i like them but that's a bang oh and i'm like oh, i'll release it but the one my personal one is probably anxiety the one we just dropped i just dropped um if not it'll be the one that i just shot today all right yeah. um just because i put more time into them more effort mm. i thought about it a bit more um than i normally do when i write normally i'll just write one take and then that's the song done but these ones i writ then a couple of days later, I went over it, started changing words. It would get me and it started flick and then patterned it. Where yeah. I've never really done that before. Like I've not really took it serious. Whereas these ones I'm starting to take more serious. So hopefully by the end of 2023, beginning of 24, there's some uh, good bangers coming. Nice, nice. Some good bangers. Nice. Um, you dropped quite a lot this year, I think, from what I've seen. I dropped a few. Time. Yeah, I dropped a few, quite a lot. Um, I think the, at least six tracks mm. minimum because i saw an album uh good scars and oh. an ep as well yeah yeah so that one that one 
Got on a, yeah, oh, I don't even know. That could have been this year as well, yeah. <laughs> it, said, it said 2023, yeah. Yeah. You got, you got yeah. Uh, good samples. By you might be right. Well. Yeah, you might be right still, yeah. yeah. So, oh, probably like 15 tracks then. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a lot. Yeah, He's working hard. Quite yeah. A lot. <laughs> I forgot what? about that, man. Yeah, because I, I was listening to it. I think my favourite song out of all of it is uh, 9 to 5 Too Slow. 9 to 5 Too Slow. I like that slow. one still, yeah. yeah. See, that one, um, that's a funny story to that one, you know. Um, I was we, I was living in a flat at the time. I was renting out one flat um, with my missus and the kids and that. And I didn't know the beat for the song or nothing. All right. Didn't know the track or nothing. I woke up to a dream. I was dreaming at like 2 in the morning. I woke up. And in my dream, the hook, I must have been in the studio in my dream, yeah. laying the hook down right. in the studio. But I've never <laughs> heard the track before, never even heard the words before, nothing. Right. But I'm in my dream in the booth, nine to five too slow. Duh, 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 duh. And I woke up and I'm like, whoa, that's a banger. Like, <laughs> I need to go write that. So I went on the balcony quickly, smoking a little something and was writing it. I was like, and then the next day I was like, I need to find a beat for this. I need to find a beat. So I found a beat on, on YouTube, ended up leasing the beat, went to studio, slapped it up. And then that's how that tune was made. So yeah. I, I literally wrote half of that song sleeping. Damn. Like, I don't know how I done <laughs> it's that. for your yeah, dreams. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how I done that. It's the, it's mm -hmm. the most craziest song I ever wrote, but I wrote that sleeping. Half of it. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Honestly, I was stunned. I was like, yeah, it's a mad story, Storm. That's crazy. What's, what's the song that everyone comes to you and is like, yeah, I like that one? Um, if you had to think of one. The one that everyone likes, I'd probably say Scars. Mm. There's a song called Scars. Um, I think it's only got like 70,000 views. Um, I dropped that at the end of last 2022. End okay, of 2022. Right. Um, what, what is it about as well? So it's, to be honest, I wrote it. I was going through a deep time. Mm -hmm. um, my brethren died. Pardon me, my brethren died at the time. Um, basically, we was out at an engagement and that, and it was all a madness. Things went on with friends and that at the engagement, and all the people that was there was all friends and family. Mm. Got into a ruckus anyway. One of my brethren ended up dying. Oh, well, there at, at the engagement. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, that was a bit mad. But I was there with my kids and I left early because I had the kids. So it was like an hour later, he's dead. Yeah. And I was like, rah. So obviously I was just thinking, going through other things. Was that was that murdered or if you don't mind me asking? Well, they, they put it down to um, pneumonia and heart attack because he was out in the cold. All oh, right. At three, four in the morning. Yeah. But obviously they it, when they found him, they said that he'd like been in some talk, sort of fight basically. Mm. And um things had happened. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, it was it was quite a touching and deep situation at the time, um, and obviously I knew everyone that was involved and shit, and so it was a bit mad. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just from there that song I ended up making that song. So it was just like scars, whether it's physical, mo physically, mentally, or emotionally. I spoke about scars in them all three of them ways, basically. So yeah. you ain't just got to have scars on the show you to know that you've got scars mm. and that's what that song was about um so it, yeah and i performed that in ed fleet football ground performed that in quite a few places um a few shows in margate shoreditch so yeah it, a lot of people like that one um again that's probably one of my touchy most deepest ones but it's it, imagine yeah. it's a good one i enjoy it um other than that that's i don't really that one and, and gone home actually gone home people ask me about gone home as well they're like yo play that play that da, da, da. but other than that i don't know i just let people listen to it and if they like it they like it for me it's more for me in it like yeah i'm not doing it for you or them in the nicest way like i'm doing it for me you yeah, expressing yourself yeah man. and if, if you like it you like it if you rock with it you don't like, i don't rock with it, a lot of things but don't mean do you get me? It's yeah, no, you shouldn't be posting it just because I don't rock with it. Like, oh well, yeah, no, it's just one of them things, man. So, if you talk about the song anxiety, anxiety is what? What kind of inspired that? Is that did you did you have anxiety? Or? Yeah, like I've had anxiety for a minute, and obviously I know a lot of people that have anxiety as well. Mm. Um, so it's just one of them things. Like I've dealt, I've started to deal with it and learn to deal with it a bit better as I've got older. 
Mm. Um, but it's just one of them things. Um, and obviously, recently, there's been a lot more about men's mental health. Yeah. It's been spoke about a lot more, isn't it? So I thought I would speak on my side of it and what I felt from my anxiety and how I've dealt with it on how it sort of impacts me and my family life and that. So that's how I just made that track in it. And then it just fit. Plus the guy who owned the beat that I leased the beat off called the beat Anxiety. So All right. It was, it so what made sense, in it? Isn't it? So it yeah. makes sense. Um, so that, yeah, that's just where that come from, really. It just made sense. No, fair enough. I think, yeah, it's a, it's a touchy subject for men, but it should definitely be spoken about more. Like men's mental yeah. health. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's a big thing. And like I say, I have another pal who, who killed himself, hung himself a couple wow. of years ago. Um, again, through mental health and that. Do you know what I mean? So there's another reason why I sort of made that track as well, Scars, as well as Anxiety. And a lot of my tracks are sort of deep and that as well. So mm. there's reasons to it. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've been through certain situations. I've seen, same as a lot of people, they have. You get me? But it's... That's just the way I dealt with it was just writing it. So no, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, if we're talking about performances, I see you said you did something about football stadium. Was it? Yeah, I done Ebbsley. I performed um Young's Teflon was headlining. Nice, yeah. Um, and I done that one there, Ebbsley Football Ground. That was a good one. Um weren't too bad. Yeah. Um Is that that like you got invited to, to come and perform? Or? Yeah, so basically the, the guy who put on the event, mm. I know him from G Town Talents, they're very very um a good pet friend of mine and that so they hit me up and was like yo we got a show want you to basically like co-main event it was the sort of thing right. so i was like yeah no problem there's like yeah um young teflon's headlining blah 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 i was like all right cool and then obviously i went on like one before young's teflon or something so it was it was all right for me it was a good little spot um good yeah but it was a good night yeah it was, it was a big opening the Ebb Street Football Ground was a good venue, so yeah, it was it was something. It was a good experience as well, like it's meeting bad, people. Yeah. Get me, it was, it was networking and that, so it was good. It was good. Nice, yeah. yeah. Now I do like his music, so yeah. Be young Teflon, yeah, he's good, man. I've I've listened to him for a long time. You get me from when mum was back in school and that, so mm. it was it was it was quite mad. Still, when I met him, I was like, yo, it's <laughs> crazy and that. So yeah, it's it's, it's certain different, isn't it? No, I, I don't. I don't mind about being a fan and that. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I'm happy to be yeah, a fan. True, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm happy. So yeah, no, it was it was a good experience, man. So what kind of other performances come to mind? Because I see you doing quite a lot of boxing. So oh yeah, yeah. So my guy, my um, shout out to my guy, um, Brian and that. Them man, they they put on their own GBBU boxing. So they. What does they, that mean, sir? So it's it's like the Great British um boxing union, isn't it? Okay, so nice. That's where it is, and it's their it's their basically like white collar boxing league all oh, right yeah but yeah. It's, it's their own promotion oh. and obviously um i've jumped on their show he asked me to jump on the show and perform like in between intervals for fights and that so i've done a few of them which was very good good few hundred people there and that like it's it's a good um good setup you know what i mean they done the area football ground done loads of pleasure center um there's a few places we've done for them but the area football ground one's probably one of the best ones. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a big one. Um, and it's a very good event. And yeah, you get to watch the boxing at the same time you're performing. So <laughs> it's, it's good, man. It's, That's it's, true, it's yeah. good. Um, Your job to hype, to like what, hype out the crowd. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah. Good to hype them up and that. And then obviously, yeah, you're at boxing. So it's, you don't really need to hype them up that much. They're already hyped. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good. Um, Good crowd. Yeah, it's a good crowd. Plus, it's something different. Do you know what I mean, a lot of people that go to them events, they don't, they might not be on that side of the music or watch that sort of music. So it's a different audience for me as well. That's true. Yeah, it's a good, good, good for the fan base. Do you know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. So what's uh, what's married life like? You're married, right? Yeah, I got married and um, twenty one. So yeah, it was good. Oh no, twenty twenty maybe. <laughs> Your wife's gonna watch this. Yeah. Now, yeah. Right. No. Um, <laughs> No, we got yeah, we got married and that it was it was it was um difficult times called COVID and that. Oh yeah. We had to postpone yeah. it a few times and that, um, which was a bit of a mad one. Um postponed it like three times, I think it was. And then finally done it. So we ended up doing it in Dancing House, Bexley. Okay. Bexley. Um but yeah, done that. Originally booked them the Bromley Court Hotel. 
Mm. But they was charging extortion, like 30 bags and that. For, oh. for that, just some normal package and that. And I was Damn. like, bro, it was crazy. <laughs> like, especially when Leeds Castle were charging like 40 bags, an extra 10 bags, you can get a whole castle. I was thinking, bro, are you trying to get my little hotel? <laughs> Fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> When it, when is it expensive, right? Yeah, but yeah, I went yeah. through that. Um, at the same time that I was going through my uh, court case for my son as well, oh, so wow. I paid for all of the wedding at the same time I was paying for that. So yeah. it's a bit of a bit of a mad thing. But the wedding was good, man. It was. It was uh, I always said I only get married once, and that. So that's why I done it young, and when I had the money to, do you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah, it made sense. It made sense. It was good. Plus, I, I was with my, I was with my wife in school. Then I split out of her. Then we both went our like separate ways and that, and then I got back with her. And then straight away I was like, nah, I was marrying you. So I took her Paris and nice. then proposed in Paris. Jeez. And then, yeah, <laughs> gang shit, you know what I'm saying? You have to do it right, innit? Mm. <laughs> yeah, so now we done that. Then went on a few holidays afterwards. Did you do honeymoon or? Not yet, man, because okay. obviously, like I say, it was COVID. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. It was COVID and that. And then obviously I was going through court case that spent a lot of money plus the wedding. So it's like, man, I just ain't really had the time since then either to mm. do it. And obviously with all the kids now, it's like, well, who's going to watch the kids? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got to make the right time and that. That's true. But yeah, no, it's it's, it's good. Married life's good, man. I, I enjoy it. You like, recommend it? Pardon? Would you recommend it? Uh, you got to be ready for it, man. Mm. You got to be ready for it. How do you know when you're ready? That's what I'm saying. You just you, you know, innit? it? Like if you if you're with the woman that you know, then you know, innit? it? Like yeah. this is just one of them things. I I, I can't explain it. Like so if, you have a good woman. Yeah, it's like if you know, you know. <laughs> like I don't know. If it's just like if you yeah, if you know that you you could spend the rest of your life with this person, then that's it matters. You know, innit? it? Like that's that's the one for man. Yeah, fair enough. Have you have you always been like a family man, or has that always been your goal? Nah. <laughs> no, no, man. Um, no, obviously, my family's been broken, isn't it? Mm. Like, from when I was a kid, man had a broken family and that. So, man, never really been family, man. Obviously, I, I've probably wanted it more than a lot more people because I didn't have it. Yeah. So that's probably why I wanted it, and probably why I tried so hard to make my own family mm. because I didn't have it. But I wouldn't have said I was a family man until I had my own family. If right. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, okay. Until I start having my own kids and that, I wouldn't have called myself a family man. That man wouldn't have gone around for family parties and that. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have enjoyed it. Do you know what I mean? But now I got my own family. It's like, yo, I'll to take the kids for a family party. Like, yo, so take, yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> I'm involved. I'm involved. I'm involved. So now it's good, man. It's good. No, well, fair enough. Um, how many, how many children do you have? I, I got two of of mine and two that are like my step kids, but I've raised them. They they call me dad. Nice. They're like my kids, isn't it? So you get me? So I call them my kids. Um so basically four. Okay, nice, nice. But biologically two. Yeah. Is it is it hard being a stepdad? Is it kind nah, of a choice man. you have to make or to be honest, it's it can be hard, but mm. I think I've made it easy or we've made it easy as a as a as a family, um, in in, in a sense. You get me? Because the way man's done it, like and obviously the way I am, I, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a laid back person in it. So I take it as it comes and that, and, and uh, just, and I've had step dads and that growing up. Do you know what mm. I mean? I had, my mom had boyfriends, so I know what it's like. Mm. So I never wanted to be like that. I didn't want to be that step dad where the kid, you know what I'm saying? The kid got stories and I'm like, fuck this guy, bro. Can I swear? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Say no more. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, yeah, I didn't want to be that guy, in it. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, like, yeah. This dick, this dick, this dick, this dick, this dick. So I've always been more chilled with them and that like, obviously mum I'll raise my voice and shit, but that's the standard. If they're doing something wrong, I'll raise my voice. But mm. yeah, it's it's other than that, it's it's been easy. Like they they take to me, I've talked to them. It's it's more of a family, do you know what I mean? Like they call me dad. Like they 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 get on with my sons and that, so it's it's more of a I don't know, it's easy. In my eyes, I don't see why these people are complaining. <laughs> you get me? That like, it's yeah. just because they ain't your kid don't mean nothing, bro. Like I yeah. I treat it like my child like a child. So if if that's how you do it, it should be easy. Yeah. For any yeah. person. If if you're if in my eyes, if you're if you're a step step figure, whether you're a stepmother or a stepfather, if 
you treat that child like it's your child, mm. your life will be easy. No, I see. Because that mm. child's going to love you. But if you start treating that child different, yeah. they're going to clock. You get me? Because I clocked with my stepdads and that. Like, you start treating me like that, but I'm going to start being a dickhead. You get me? Like, you can't yeah. do that. So that's the way I've been, and it's worked very well in my eyes. Um, Fair enough. It works very well, to be fair, yeah. yeah. You ever see that woman that went viral because she bought, she had, like, two of her own kids mm. and two of her kids from her boyfriend, right? Mm. And she bought McDonald's only for her kids uh, and made what? the other two kids go home hungry. And then when the man found out now, he was just angry, innit? Yeah, it's that, that's what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> that's, I, I know people like that, though. That's the oh, well, that's real. Yeah, that's, that's not... That's not no. I know people like that that, that that will do them things, you get me? And it yeah. reminds me up, bro. A bit petty, innit? Yeah, that's, in my eyes, it's petty because, you see me, I'm the sort of person, even if I'm with my pals, for it, like, if I'm with my pals and they got kids, yeah, yeah, and I'm out with my kids and their kids, and I go to the shop mm. and I get a suite for my kids, you think I'm coming out and not getting their kids a sweet? Bro, the kids are going to be crying. Why is yeah. this sweet? Like, <laughs> and then my brethren's got to go in the shop again. Yeah. Just more time, more. T- when I'm going in there anyway, I might as well just get it. Easy. I'm not going to leave one kid out. Like, that's the way I've, I've, because of how what I've been and seen, you get me, growing up, that's the way I have to be. Like, you can't leave one out. Like, you're just going to let one kid sit there, starve or, or cry or be upset because... They haven't got a sweet from the shop and you just walked in there and got five sweets for your kid. True. Uh, that's the jolt thing. Yeah. That's savage, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so yeah. that's the way I see it with stepkids. Like if man's gonna get something for my kid, I'm gonna get it for my stepkids. Like, the mm. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just yeah, I don't get it, man. Some people are funny. That's like, yeah, them them viral videos there, they just make me laugh. <laughs> what's what's the hardest thing about being a parent? Hardest thing. Yeah. Leaving the house. Ooh. Okay. Leaving the house. I say that's the hardest thing about being a parent is leaving my house. Because my son goes mad. Don't want to leave and that. He's, ah, he wants to come with me and that. And it, it, it can't always come with me. You get me? So. But that's a nice feeling though. It's nice, yeah. but it's also horrible at the same time. Oh, yeah. Cause it's also the worst that. feeling that, or the worst thing that I can do as a parent because I don't want to let them cry over that or I don't want to let yeah. them feel sad over something that they shouldn't feel sad over yeah. you get me because even if it's just man going to the shop they're going to cry mm. but oh, as much as man tells you bro I'll be back in two minutes going to cry so in me my eyes is coming in and then going yeah. so yeah. once like once I come home and if I have to pop back out again within a quick short space of time that's the worst part about being a parent in my eyes yeah. that's in my eyes isn't it because everything else is easy to Fair me. enough. Everything else is easy to me. It just comes natural, in it? Like, I just treat them how I'd want to be treated. So it's just, it's just natural. Yeah. Is it, is it hard having a baby mama? A baby mom? What, as well as my missus? Um, yeah. I mean, because I know there's a lot of drama that goes on sometimes with, with yeah, baby Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's, it's painful, man. And obviously, but it could be a lot worse. Mm. You know what I mean? I can have a lot worse than that. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, it's it's as easy as you make it. At the minute, it's hard, isn't it? Because man gone through court cases and that, so mm. it's just been hard and that. And then she had injunctions on man and petty and that. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's just long. Um, it was harder for me in that sense, but it's mm. it's still easy. Like it's yeah, it's just, as long as you don't cause them no dramas, they ain't gonna <laughs> cause you dramas. You get me? Ah, oh, fair enough. Can you, can you talk about the court case a little? Yeah, so my I went through the court case and that um she basically I was with her, I left her, things was gone fine, and then one day she just disappeared and that. And I was like, what? Like when we was meant to pick them up for the like school term holiday or something, you know, like the week they have off and like the break mm. and that. And I picked them up and booked them for swimming lessons and that for the week. So obviously she had a daughter at the time that wasn't mine and then obviously i had my my eldest which is my son and, that. and then obviously um yeah she um yeah i took i basically took a daughter on as my own mm. i was like 17 just found out that well just had my kid that was 17 she just had my my first kid and that yeah. and um yeah i was with her like a year and that and then obviously this happened so I'd been looking after her daughter before my son was even around for like a good year or two. 
So she was like three when my son was born. Oh. Do you know what I mean? So I was like 17 with a three year old and a one year old. Like, oh. it was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you can't even, I'm not even old enough for this shit. Like, so yeah, yeah. it was hard, didn't it? And then obviously, mum was young, I tried to make it work and that. It obviously it didn't work and that was just it's one of them things in it relationships don't always work boom so man left everything was fine i was still looking after her daughter and my son every oh, yeah. every other weekend i'd have them over my house yeah i'd see them every tuesday thursday night or the evening and that's how it was for like a good six months after i split out of her mm. good six to eight months and then one day man's booked this thing in gone to pick them up they just disappeared what do you mean Bro, oh, disappeared, man. It's gone. Like, I'm knocking on the door. No one's there. Looking through the window. All the stuff's gone. Like, oh. ringing, block my number, block my socials, everything. It good. It just disappeared, bro. Like, I'm thinking, what the fuck? So, I left it. I'm thinking, oh, she just, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking, I'll just leave it, see what happens. Yeah. But then a few months gone by, and obviously, man's started feeling it i'm like nah like man needs to see my son bro like he must be like coming up to two now i was getting a bit mad like yeah i had him up until a year he, she'd been gone for like six months so he must have been like a year and a half do you know what i mean so i'm like bro like what the fuck's my son like mm. I missed six months of his life like so then i started taking to court and that and i was like i need to go court find out where the fuck she is like is she not ours? i can't get hold of her not like everyone i was speaking to is blanking me like it was one of them i'm thinking what the that's fuck? crazy so then I went through court proceedings. They're trying to find us. Gone through weeks and weeks of court proceedings. Every time I'm going court, I'm spending like a thousand to two thousand pounds for the solicitors. Damn. Because obviously, I not get legal aid. I'm not on benefits. I'm not on that. Like, mm. I'll get it for free. Yeah. But she gets it for free. Yeah. yeah. So she so can, she can just yeah. milk the system like some waste, man. Mm. So I'm there like shit. If now I've started it, I got to finish it. If I don't, I'm a deadbeat. Like, it matters. I'm a dickhead dad. If I can't start it and then say, oh, I, I've got to stop now. Like, so I had to keep going. And my pockets was feeling brass, bro. I was oh. going shit. And I'm getting nowhere because they're not finding her. Yeah. Every it's, time they... go gone missing. Yeah. Every time yeah. they find her or they, <laughs> the police get her on a credit card or whatever and they know what area she's in, they'll serve her at the door and she'll go to another place. Damn. I moved. So this happened like three times. We went North Lincolnshire, somewhere else. Then they found her in Scotland, didn't it? And then I'm like, raw, oh, Scotland. <laughs> you doing in Scotland, G? Like, what? Like, so I obviously been like 10 months now, I've not seen my son. So I'm mad, like, I'm to the point it's hurting. Like, man, I don't know where he is, if he's safe. Mm. I'm hearing stories. Social services are finding things out, saying that all sorts of madnesses. While I'm going through this call, I'm finding all sorts. I'm thinking, nah, like, is my son safe? Like, mm. And then obviously while I'm going through all this, I was trying to s get contact to see my son as well as her daughter because obviously I raised her. So at the time, my daughter, like, I, I was young, innit? I was 17, 18, yeah. coming up to 18. I, re I just raised your daughter, bro, for like two years. What are you talking about? Like, in my eyes, I want to see them both. Yeah, yeah. But it got to the point where now she started, where they found her in Scotland, she had no other choice. They've, like, served her fully, da 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 um, They've, um brung it back now and man basically had to do a madness go over to scotland so uh, well basically what happened was so the, all this has happened to the she's in scotland i got a phone call after man's gone through all the court cases they finally tracked her down in scotland um who's this the police or yeah the, yeah. Well, the police and well, of course see the courts and all of that yeah. they've they've ordered it to, for the police to find her basically yeah so they've done that found her the courts have run me back like we found her we served her um she will be coming to the next hearing blah 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 i'm like all right cool no problem the, 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 the next hearing come she didn't come Damn. so i'm like what you served her bro like she's breaking the law now like if this was me i'll be in jail yeah, you would have locked me up yeah. you would have locked me up i'm a male like you would have locked me up for missing a court hearing like what are you talking about yeah you've been served by the people they've served you and you still missed that was me i'll be locked so i'm getting mad at the court now i'm like now nah, you lot are violating me like you're making me out to be an idiot like i'm not having it so anyway come to it now she missed it so i've put in a mad complaint duh, 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 duh. i get a phone call like two o'clock in the afternoon from social services in scotland hello there blah 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 um we've got your we're going to pick up your son from nursery or something or, yeah nursery or something um you're gonna to have to come and meet us at 
um, the airport in Scotland at five o'clock. Yeah. I'm like, bro, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, mate. Yeah, you want me to get to fucking Got Scotland three in three hours? <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, we're going to get him now. You're going to have to meet us. So I'm like, ah, shit, fuck it. Let me get a plane. So I booked a plane, got a plane, managed to get there just before five. By the time I've got out, gone through, met them, showed them passports, who I am, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The last plane flies out at like half five from that airport. It's like a small airport. Yeah. Inverness or something. Last plane flew out at like half five. But I booked the last plane back for me and my son. But we missed it. So I didn't have to book the closest... The hotel, which is like a premier around the corner for me and him, which is like another 300 pound just yeah. for one night. Yeah, in Scotland. I thought, what? <laughs> Should be then, cheaper, innit? Yeah. <laughs> then we booked another two flights, which is like another 300 pound. Wow. To go back the next morning at like six in the morning. Yeah. But then now I've got to pay the Gatwick charge because I've left the vehicle there overnight for time. And that, so I got to pay that as well. So I was pissed. I'm like, no, nah, this is a long, like, Got back with him, things was all a bit weird. So I rung the court up and I'm like, look, I've got the, co I've got him. You give me my contact order. However, I'm not sending him back. I don't feel it's safe for me to send him back. So then they went through a whole rigmarole now, where they sent out the order to her saying, we're not sending him back, blah, blah, blah. So she's finally come back from Scotland. because She's like, I've got to fight this now. I've lost my son. Like they're not sending him back. Mm. So she finally come back, which then the court case started basically from there. But by then I'd already spent, 10 months trying to find her in court and spent like 20 grand just trying to find her wow. i'm 20 grand down so now yeah. the court case is just beginning and i still got to spend the money so i was like yo. but then obviously i had the wedding booked so i was paying for that and it was like yo there's just stress in it so went through that then I ended up going through all of that another six months or so of straight court cases every week every week duh, 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 duh. and then i won um it was meant to be, I had full custody in it and I had him living with me for a full living order, everything. Mm. And somehow they managed to swap the judges on the very last hearing. So I had the same judge every hearing. Sorry. And for some reason, went to the last hearing and they cancelled the hearing and said, now we got to book it in for the week later. Just so happened that week later, my judge wasn't in. Uh. So the judge that's been dealing with the whole case is now gone. They put some random guy in and he's looking at me like I am a dickhead. As soon as I walk through the court, he's like, nah, this guy must be a scumbag. Do you get me? But I'm there suited and booted. I'm looking fresh. Like, I'm like, and she come in like, yeah, I'm saying, I'm thinking, nah, bro, this, you're going to stitch me up. Yeah. But they, they give me 50-50. So I got full 50-50. She can't do nothing without my say-so, same as me. I can't do nothing without the say-so. So I was happy with that. Yeah. Most people don't even get that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm yeah. like, bro, 50-50. But in my eyes, I just spent 40 something pounds, 40, 40 something thousand pounds, and I still got the short end of the straw yeah. while you're getting it for free, missing court cases. And, and you get me? And it's like, <laughs> oh, if this was me, I'd be in the proper shit. Like, so I went through all of that, and then I got it, and then I had him living with me. And then obviously, it got to the point where she wanted him back. So we had 50 50, and we come to an arrangement where obviously, He'll spend the week while he goes to school with her and that, and then he come to me on the weekends and that. So oh, I just enough. compromised, didn't it? Because it was just easier and it was less hassle and stress. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah, that that was that really. The court case went on for time. I spent a lot of days stressing, arguing. Not only that, my missus was pregnant at the time I was going through the court case. Yeah, a lot going on, man. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I couldn't. And when my son, when my other son was born, because I was going through that court case, it sort of pushed me from bonding with him because oh, right, right. it was I was more in the mind space of how can I bond with my son when I'm lost another son already? Yeah. You get me? That's yeah. that was going through my. It was hard for me. It was like I don't want to start bonding with my new son because I feel like I'm letting down my my other son. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? So. It was a very hard situation. Like, man went through a lot of pain and a lot of stress and a lot of bad things. And I lost a lot of money, man. So, yeah, <laughs> it was right. peak. It was, lot, peak. Yeah. it was peak. But it was peak. Um, but it was a good experience in, in all mm. for the system, though, the way the system works with children. Do you, do you think it favours the woman? Yeah. 100%? A million percent, bro. Okay. I could put that on a million percent. I got friends that have been through the same situation after me because they've yeah. seen how well mine went. 
But when I tell them that mine didn't go well, they're like, yeah, but the outcome went well. I'm like, yeah, but bro, it didn't go well. I went through hell. Like, I stopped smoking. I stopped, like, doing a lot of things, bro, because she was getting the court and the police to go through my shit and check through shit and da da da. I had to stop a lot of things, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. making money for a good time as well. Like, it yeah. was peak. So, there was a lot of things I had to stop, but I, there was certain things I couldn't stop because if I stopped it, I wouldn't have been able to afford things and and pay for the court case and do yeah. things. Um, so, yeah, it was hard. It was very hard to juggle a lot of things and, and, and obviously a newborn and the wedding and everything at the same time. So, yeah, it was... It was mental, man. And obviously, I was only like 21. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's a lot. It's yeah. mad, isn't it? It's <laughs> mad. When you think about it, like, when I, think, when I say these things, I feel like I'm 35 and that, but I was only 25. So it's a lot. I went through a lot in a short space of time. Yeah. It made me grow up 10 years quicker than I should have. Yeah. And it, it's give man a good head of space and a good mind frame. And when I look at certain things and certain people, I know that the man, uh, I know where I am and where they are. And it's like, yeah, they, hundred, yeah. That it's helped, man. You get it's me? The same stress you can go through, someone else won't be able to. Yeah, do exactly. That. And yeah. If, if man can give advice to a lot of people, uh, when I speak to certain people and they ask me, I'm, uh, I'm happy to do that because if it's going to help you in your situation, then take that and deal with it and use it however you wish to. You get me? Mm. Because it's it's not easy. Like, I don't wish it on no one to go through any of them things, even to go through them all at the same time yeah. is a bit mad. But to go through any of them is just deep. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's good, man. It's 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 a good experience for me still. How, how do you spend your spare time? <laughs> My spare, what, my free time? Free my time. Spare time. <laughs> my free time, I spend it with the kids. If I'm doing nothing or I've got nothing planned, I'm indoors probably playing GTA with my son, my four-year-old. Nice. I'm gta and it up with him or he just started banging zombies. All right, right. No cap. My son <laughs> is four years old, bruv. And me and him got, like, I, I'm whack at game, innit? I never really play game ever. Mm. Like even when I was younger, I was whack. I never played it. I was always out, so I never really had time for it. But when I come in and the man would be playing it now and again, I might have played it then back in the day. But even then, I was whack. Like I was no good. Do you get me? So <laughs> now I play it with my son. I don't know if it's just me because I'm whack, or if he's actually ten out of ten. But he plays zombies and he gets to like round eighteen with me, bro. Damn. Like. I'm telling you, he's four years old. <laughs> he might go down six times, but That's he's around 18. Like he, he's there locked in. Like and he's telling me what to do. He's like, let's turn the electric on. Let's do that. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, you're four years old. You're about to turn the electric on. Like, yeah, let's get the box and that. I'm like, what? You might be a prodigy. Yeah. So now, like, that's my spare time, and I enjoy it every moment mm. of it. If if I got free time, it's 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 with the kids, definitely. Um, and that's no cap. It's even if I go out with, to see my pals, I'll probably take one of the kids with me. Like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that's, I, that's just how I am, isn't it? I prefer it like that. I, if, if I got time, that's what it's for. If, 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 if my time's free, that's what it's for. If it's not free, I'm getting money or I'm working on myself or I'm working to better my music or better my business or better something. You know what I mean? So mm. if there's anything free time, it's just chilling and resting. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned a story about a car crash, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Which yeah. ended up being like the... Yeah, see, that was a bad tape story. As well. Yeah, so I used it for one of my mixtape. I think it was Hood, Hood Scars or something. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I was I was out one day. There was a storm, some storm Ewan, so I don't know what the name was, to be honest, but... Yeah, I think it was Storm Ewan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, something like, so that storm was there. Man, yeah, he's a bit mad on the roads. Obviously, mine was a... Well, what car was it? It was a Mercedes um, GL4, GLE 450 or something. So it was a 4.5 litre. But when I bought it, <laughs> when I bought it, I thought it was a 3.5 litre. Oh, right, right. So when I insured it, I was kind of pissed. Is it expensive? <laughs> it's peak, bro. It's peak. So, yeah, man done that. Got that. Um, and it was a, it was meant to be my, my, my legit family. Basically... The family car that's gonna last me a good ten years. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, what I bought it. For. Big car. Yeah. It was a big seven seat. Uh, 
electric seats, heated seat, all of that yeah. proper. Yeah, high spec, all, cool. oh, yeah, high spec, everything, the whole shebang. So I'm like, all right, cool. Looked apart, everything. I thought, yeah, like it's this good. good. That can be my family car. Because mm. I went for a lot of cars, innit? I always buy cars. So I thought this one I'm gonna keep and I'm not gonna buy no more. That's it. Yeah. I had it six months. I spent 20 bags on it or something. I had it six months. Um and then I crashed it. Yeah. Was, wow. That storm happened, something flew in the windscreen. It just threw you off like yeah. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm a small guy, it's a big car, innit? So obviously <laughs> I lost control. I slipped. I hit the curb, but I blacked out, couldn't see nothing. So where I blacked out, I'm hitting all the path, parked cars, railings, ripped out like 30 grand's worth of criminal damage, of council damage, <laughs> um, had the police on me and that. But I Was got, that at the scene they came to? Or? Oh, bro, oh bro, after. I hit legs. So oh, I really? crashed. Yeah, yeah, I crashed. <laughs> I crashed in it. I crashed and then um, I panicked. Yeah. Obviously, man, I was young. I was on the roads. Like, How long ago was this? Two years ago. Okay, right, right. Yeah, like just two years ago. So you were you just exited the scene? Nah, nah, nah. What happened? Was <laughs> man was panicking, innit? Obviously, man had stuff and that. My bedroom was in the car. Mm. Um, it was a big crash. Man clocked. It was a big crash. I got out the car. The, the whole side, like so you know, the light, the 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 lights. Yeah. On the side of the car, there was no lights. Oh. They, they, they the whole lights they would have been ripped off. They was gone. <laughs> the whole wing had come off the side. There was a dent in the front. I was like. I grabbed all my stuff out the car and I run. Mm. My guy's like, why are you running? I'm like, I'm running. So I run because I was just panicked. And then, um, yeah, I rang the police. I was like, yo, I had a car crash. I've left the car on the side of the road. It's in a safe space. No one's injured. That ain't hurt no one. Oh, you called? That's clever. So yeah. You called them, yeah. I yeah. told them, like, bro, it's an accident, isn't it? This is mm. what my insurance for, man. Yeah, true. You know I mean, mm. so I rang insurance, told them the same thing. Like, yo, storm urns and that, it's just fucked me up. Um, made me crash. They was like, what? I was like, yeah, something flew in my windscreen, I lost control, a small car, big like, big car, small guy, you know what I mean? They was all like, what? I was like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, went for all of that, come back, they was like, yeah, we're going to pay you out for it. I was like, what? You know what? We're going to pay me out? They was like, yeah, yeah. You know, result. So I got the money back for that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Then about two weeks later, I get some fucking phone call and that, yo, Lisa at the door for you. I said, you what? Police at the door. I'm thinking, no, nah, police ain't been at my door since I was like 18, mate. So what the mm. fuck are they doing at my door? You know what I mean? So I'm panicking. I'm like, shit, what? Anyway, I come there. They're like, yeah, we just want to talk to you about the car crash. And I'm like, and I'm like oh, snap. All right. It's coming on. They're going to they're gonna bring something down. So because of, of the damage in it, this is why I was panicking. That's why I got out and run. Because a lot of damage, criminal damage to like the, the council and it. So I'm like, shit, and then they come in my house. Just want to talk to you, sir. Like, it's nothing to do. I was like, look, just tell me now, innit? Like, it's not, you're not going to do nothing. They was yeah. like, nah, nah, it's not. We just want to have a chat. So I was like, all right, cool. Come in and chat. Come in. I explained the story to them again. I said, look, small, big car, small guy. I lost control. They just wanted to hear it again. And then they was like, right, now the only reason we come because we've got this and showed me a letter. And it had like 28,000 something worth of criminal damage. And then you had another. Is that to like the council's property? The council, yeah. But then they had another letter underneath where they was trying to, the woman was trying to claim against me crashing in her parked car. Oh, oh, you hit a car as well? Yeah, I hit a few parked cars. But I'm a like, few. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, how are you claiming? Because. I've been paid off and I'm not even with that insurance company now. So you can't claim on the insurance I'm not with. Yeah. yeah, this is all late. So I'm like to the police, you can, how does, how's this going to work? He was like, oh, no, fair enough, mate. I said, listen, bro, like, I got insurance. This yeah. is what I pay my insurance for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if an accident happens, it happens. It's not like man just hit a person and, and just drove off. They yeah. was like, why yeah. did you run off? I said, but I ran off because I was young. Like, I'm still young. Like, I was scared. It's a big car. You get me? Like, I just done a lot of damage. I shit myself. Like, I told him the truth. You know what I mean? Like, mm. what the fuck you want me to do? Stand there and fucking, nah, I run, innit? And he was like, all right, fair enough. I was like, yeah, so I got away with that one. Um, <laughs> that was a nice one. That was a nice one. I got good, paid good out. Payout. Paid out. Yeah, they yeah. paid, nah, to be fair, they give me, they give me 10,000 pounds. All right. But they took three grand because oh. my insurance was so high and I had like six months left. So I think my insurance was like three, like four grand a year. Wow. I was paying like four hundred pound a month, man. Cause it's four point five liter. That's why, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and and obviously I, I I had a few points and that, so the insurance was a bit mad. What's what's your vices in there? 
Like, what's your what's your outlet? Like, do you smoke? Do you drink? I smoke, yeah, but I don't promote it. Okay, okay. I smoke, yeah, it's good stuff, but I don't promote it. <laughs> it's good stuff. No, I'm promoting, no, no, no. I, don't get me wrong, I smoked since I was young. Um, yeah. I stopped for the court case and that. And, well, I stopped before the court case, to be fair. And then, obviously, I carried it on when I was going through the court case. So like just to have, like, a clean head or... Clean right head, head, just everything. And, obviously, I had to get drug tested for the court case to prove that I could have my kid and that. Jam. Oh, right, so right. They done a three, three months hair strand test, everything. Like, wow. And, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I stopped for, like, over a year and a half. And then I started again when I went through a few things, that like my brethren dying a few other things and that happened um i got tested for bowel cancer and that all right got tested for bowel cancer and that um in 21 to 2021 what, what kind of brought that one if you don't mind me also just, just, I, just i was getting mad belly pains um that every time i go for a toilet it was coming out with blood and shit like all right mad um it's crazy to be honest it was, it was it was just weird that went on for a little while and then i ended up getting tested for like bowel cancer and that but mm. it was i didn't know what i was getting tested for they wouldn't tell me all right and then it was only when i started sitting in these rooms and everyone in this room was over 70 and i'm thinking nah bro why am i in a hospital with everyone over 70 and then some geezer next to me he's talking to me he's like you're right yeah he's like oh so uh, how's your treatment going and i was like what so what How's your treatment guy? I was like, no, I ain't getting no treatment, bro. What are you talking about? And he's like, so what are you doing here? And that's when I clocked, like, right, this must be the cancer ward. Like, oh, this yeah. must be where they're all at. And then I went in to ask the doctor, I was like, look, you've been testing me for a, a few weeks now. Like, what are you testing me for? And mm. he's like, we were testing you for um, bowel cancer and a few other things. But it ended up coming that I just had. Um, inflammatory bowel disease which is like a thousand times worse than ibs or something okay, right, right. so if i eat certain things my bowels can just inflame and blow up basically Damn. yeah but other than that that was that was that's it so what's what's the result of that you can't just watch what you eat you, you know certain things to eat oh, oh no <laughs> oh shit i eat everything bro um but it's been all right then yeah. it's been all right yeah, yeah i think it's been more i think it's more how i eat because mm. i used to just eat a lot like, I'm so skinny, I don't put weight on. All right, but right. I, I used to eat a lot, and I'd eat a lot of shit, shit, shit all the time. Whereas now, I don't eat a lot of shit, shit. I'm eating more cooked foods and that, like, do you know what I mean? Like, the yeah. mist is cooking foods and that, bro. I can't cook. So before, I'd always order takeaways, and I think that's what was doing it. More of the unhealthy living and that constantly draining my body, eating shit. That's probably what took a toll on on the way my body was reacting. So I've just stopped doing that and mainly eat more healthier and that. Fair enough, fair enough. More cool. Well, not, I say healthier, just more cooked food rather than takeouts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's all right. Do you still have an Arsenal chain? I saw you. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, no, I ain't going on today. You haven't today though. No, I ain't going on today. I got Arsenal. I got that from Ice Jules. Um, yes, yeah. I got it from Ice Jules on Hatton Gardens about, I want to say seven years ago. Had yeah. it for a long time. Um, nines, I got that from Nines. When Nines got got his one, um, yeah. when he had it back in the day, and his fire in the booth and that, and his um, his street his street freestyle that he done. That's that's when I really see that. And then I thought, you know, I need me one of them. Um, and I went and got that one, and I bought the little one. I bought the big pendant and I bought a little pendant, both from Ice Jewels at the same time. Right. Um, and I've just kept them. Um, but yeah, I, I I used to be into football a lot. Um, I played for Millwall when I was in primary school. I got scouted for Millwall. And then just yes. before I went into secondary school, I was about to get scouted for Arsenal. I played for Arsenal one game and then I left. You actually played for Arsenal? Yeah, under 16. Cool, though. Under 16, yeah. That's still nice though, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, under 16, I got one, I got a few... Trophies indoors for me, wool and that for tournaments. Car, I used to just do it through the school, innit? At like Southeast tournaments for the school. Yeah. Then I ended up getting scouted at one um, tournament for me, wool under 16s. And then from my, and from there, I was about to get scouted into, um, oh no, me, wool, I got under 14, sorry. Mm. And then from there, I was about to get scouted into under 16s Arsenal. Like I think I got, got in there 
and I played one game and then I never went back. Oh, I right. ended up just smoking, smoking weed and this and that, and I lost interest. And then um, when I turned 15, I got hit by a car. I was riding a pushback. Oh. It had no brakes. <laughs> what a pushback then. Yeah. <laughs> no one told me though. Oh no. no. I'm on the pushback on this BMX <laughs> and I'm driving on a hill and it started raining. And I was so high. I remember smoking bare weed with the man them in the field. I don't know what he was doing, but I was young, like 15. Mm. I'm thinking, yo, I need to go to McDonald's. So I hopped on the thing, driving McD's, and one car come around the corner fast. Apparently the witnesses said, because I got paid out, I got it, I got um I've made a claim on it and that. All right, yeah. Paid out, but the witnesses said the car must have come round at like fifty. It was obviously a thirty, in it? So yeah. Thirty yeah. Old, so we, where he come round, he's already. He, he's he's already in the room. Yeah. Um, so he come round fifty, but not gonna lie, it was my fault. The car in front of me <laughs> stopped in it, and um, I swerved into the other side of the road. Oh right. That car right. stopped, and I had no brakes. I realized I got no brakes. Yeah. I'm like shit. I'm about to go up the arse of this car, so I've swerved that way. But the cars come flying around the corner. And we gone head on to each other. Oh, serious? Yeah, the witnesses said that I done a front flip or something in the air. I had some converse on at the time. One of my converses was in the road on the other side of the road. Yeah. I got up, but it happened right outside Asda's. And where I was so high and I was hungry, I got up, walked into Asda's with one shoe on, <laughs> bought a meal deal, come out. And then the police was like, yo, get on the floor, get on the floor. And I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? They're like, yo, get on the floor. Then they pulled my trouser leg up and my bone was hanging out of my ankle. No. And I passed out on the floor there. And then I was like, boom. I woke up in hospital and they must have surgered me up because I was all casted up and I was like, what the fuck just happened? Damn. They said, like, you got hit by a car. I said, what? They said, like, yeah, you got hit by a car. I was like, nah, that's not right, man. I was just riding a bike 20 minutes ago. And they were like, nah, you got hit by a car, mate. I was like, I don't fucking know. So you didn't feel nothing. I didn't know shit. Must have been yeah, yeah, I think I was so adrenaline and that, and I was so high. I just walked in as just got the sandwich. That's the last thing I remember. <laughs> and then I woke up in hospital with a cast on my leg. And then two weeks later, I cut the cast off and ran away to South End and that. And um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it was a mad thing. So my mum was in South End doing the craziness of with a broken leg and that like, hopping around with crutches. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked. It's fucked. So crazy. What did you go to South End for? Or was that what we, we don't run away? Car. My mum was with some. Dickhead brother at the time, okay, right, right. I didn't like it. And then obviously man's just stressing and that. So I thought, fuck this. And my brother was on the run from the police in South End, didn't it? Oh, right, so I right. Thought, where can I right. go where no one's going to find man? Well, no one knows he's there. So I'm going there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I went there. I was like, yo, I'm coming to you. He's like, yeah, yeah, come. So I ended up bunking like five, three trains to get there. I don't remember how I got there. I had to go through. Madnesses to get fucking all the way down there. Yeah. Yeah, St. Pancras, all of that, getting on the train. Or, yeah, I went down there, but bearing in mind, I just, got, I just cut my cast off. So I'm Crazy. walking with a shoe on, but crutches, and my legs thin and that way. I just had surgery. Yeah, it's all busted. So mine's all taking me time to get through the fucking train stations and that. And then I got down there. I must have been in South End for three days, and the police found me, bro. Uh. My mum, my mum, she G'd me up still. <laughs> The police come got me. I, I just remember the police knocking on the door. Must have been that. Like, yeah, I think it's 50, 15, 16 when I broke my leg. So yeah, it must have been about there. Police knocked on the door and I just tried to run and jump the back fence. But man, it just broke the leg in it. It's been all, out of a cast for like, well, it should be in the cast, but I climbed yeah. off myself, innit? So it's got no cast on. And I'm just, I run and I hop the fence. But where I hop the fence, I just, I fucked my leg again. Right. And I made it like 10 steps down the road. And then the police come. And I was like, oh, yeah, ain't running nowhere. Oh, you tried to run away? Yeah, it? I was like, I ain't running nowhere, innit? And then they just come there and say, like, why are you running? You're on the missing list and that. And I was like, I'm not like my fucking my boyfriend. I ain't going home. Da, da, da. And then it was just one of them. They took me station, sat man down, had a convo. My mum come pick me up. And then I was like, why the fuck you got her to pick me up? I don't want to go back there. Like, yeah, it's just so, What did grab you for truancy? Like, missing yeah, court. missing person, innit? That's what oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Missing person, but because... I think they thought man was in danger in danger because I was always on like for bad shit. I got had drug and that on my record. So I think they must have thought man was doing bad shit as well, innit? So, yeah. And obviously, yeah, man was missing for longer than twenty four hours, so they they have to come and search for you really, innit? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. You like you like your jewelry quite a lot then? Yeah, I, I enjoy jewelry. Um What is it about jewelry? 
I just like the way it looks. Is it? I'm not gonna cap like I'm. I like the way it looks, but there's only got to be, it's, it's got to be certain things though. I don't like certain like I'm not flashy, too flashy with it. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously, man, I like a bit of shine and a bit of bling now and again. No, but I see a couple of chains there. Yeah, I like a bit of shine, but it's there. normal. This like this. This has been me every day. This this don't come off my neck. These three stay okay, on my yeah. neck every day. I bath in them, sleep in them. Like just, that's normal. So they normally cut thin. You get me? <laughs> that's normal. Um, but this yeah, like I just I like it now and again. Um, and obviously it's an investment. Like this is my bracelets and that that, that I paid like I think I paid two. 1800 or 2800 for that one and even now it's still worth the same do you know what mm. i mean it's a rolex bracelet so it's still worth the same like um it's just somewhere that i can put money and it's not wasted. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite your favorite bit of jewelry your favorite bit of jewelry um i got a cartier bracelet but a cartier watch indoors okay right right yeah that's probably it you like it yeah, yeah, yeah i couldn't yeah. tell you what cartier watch it is though but I just know it's a Cartier watch. Like I said, I, I like jewelry, but I'm not. You know, like so I got people with my brethren say they'll tell you everything about this watch, the date it come out. Every, I'm like, bro, I don't <laughs> care about that. If it looks nice, I want it. That's it. Just buy what you like. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just me. I'm not gonna buy something I don't know or I don't like or I don't. I don't care about that. So you don't care if it's gold, silver. I don't care. No, it could be bronze, bro. It could be a bit <laughs> of copper, mate. If it looks good, I'm wearing it. You know what I mean? I don't care. Like that's how it is. Like yeah, I got. So that's. I think that's white gold. That's some obviously yellow gold, and then obviously that's just, the rolly. Yeah. So they're, they're just. <laughs> I wear whatever I, I like to wear at the time, innit? Um, yeah. But again, it ain't gotta be anything specific like i got silver i got silver jewelry indoors as well so yeah it's, it all depends so fair enough fair enough um what can we expect from you over the next couple of years like a lot more music a lot more yeah i got some good plans coming I, I got some good visions that i'm trying to trying to go towards um hopefully a short movie by the end of 2024 nice i nice. might be in a short movie um have you done acting before or was it your own movie or my guy's movie? Um, okay. I've not done acting before. I done acting classes when I was in school and 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 and, and performing arts. I went to a performing arts like paid for that out of school. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, before, but that was all younger. Like I went for audition when I was like twelve years old for Oliver Twist. All oh, right, right. Yeah, I went for to be Oliver Twist and that, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure they give man the part of the artful dodger, but I turned it down. Yeah, because man was. They want to do it. I was just young and dumb, and I was stuck up my own ass, innit? it? And I wanted to be Oliver. I don't want to be Artful Dodger, bro. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> the fuck. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, but other than that, mate, really done it. So I'm looking to just network and get as much things in as I can. Mm. Um, I'm dropping a few, few more videos at the end of this year before Christmas. Then after that, I'm just gonna chill up until probably the end of January, February. Spend time with the kids and that, get Christmas, New Year's out of the way. Right. And then I got another five music videos to drop next year. Damn. Um, Are they all written already or? Yeah, I got two of them already sh like shot and edited. Cool. I need to do another three. Um, but I want to drop a mixtape as well, probably next year. Um, or album, maybe, something. Mm. But yeah, I'm just gonna do everything I can, bro. I'm I'm pushing to get anything I can, any collabs there is, any features, any, anything. I'm getting it all in as much as I can, bro. So, a few people been hitting me up on Instagram, um, showing me some beats. A few other people wanted to do some features, so I might hit back at a few people, um, and just see what happens. See what happens, man. Ah, oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, we've got a question that we ask everyone. Go on. It's just about life. Like, what, what, what inspires you? What inspires me? Ah, mm. uh, that's a hard one. You know. Do you know what? I don't think I have got anything that inspires me in life. It's more what I don't want to be like. That's okay, how right. I see it. So I, I've always been in my mind that I'm not gonna be like my dad. I'm not gonna be like my brothers. I'm not gonna be like the people that are close around me that have failed. Or that I've used to look up to, 
that have failed. Do you get me? Mm. Or that have not got something they should have achieved, but they've fucked it. Do you get me? Like in them ways. So I go from that. I just want to be better than myself and everyone around me. Yeah. Not in not in the sense that I will always be better than you or um, I'll take the piss out or um, I think I'm better than that person, but I just want to be better in everything I do, whether it's me or what people around me are doing. I want to be the best at that because that's what I'm doing. Do you get me? So mm. I just focus on myself and, and better in myself, bro. That's it. So nothing inspires me but me, innit? So. No, that's good. That's good. So we haven't had that one. Yeah. It's facts. <laughs> that's just real. Like, that's just true. Nothing, nothing really inspires me but me, innit? So. Well, you said that you said what inspires you is that, you know, the stuff that you don't want to be. So. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. yeah. Unless it's, unless it's something that I want to do, then yeah, I don't, I don't really know. That's it. That's all I can say for that one. No, fair enough. Um, I'm wrapping up, but do you believe in any in, uh, conspiracy theories? Conspiracy any... theories? Yeah. Go on, give me one. What do like, you mean? Flat Earth or the Earth flat is wrong? Earth. No, you see what? You see all these conspiracy theories? There's definitely aliens, though. Aliens? Yeah. Okay, okay. See, what, what do you think about aliens? I don't or why, do you, why do you think there's aliens? I don't think nothing about them. I just think there's definitely fucking aliens. Where? <laughs> I don't care what they are, how they look or anything, but I know there's someone out there other than us. You get me? You can't tell me yeah. we've got all these planets and we're the only people out there, bro. Mm. That's bullshit. Yeah. So that's the only conspiracy theory that I, I really um I really think of. What about and, the Illuminati? Oh yeah, man, man believes in that and that and, and selling your soul and all them things there, but I don't I don't think deep too much into it like i probably don't know as much as a lot of people do about it so i'm not going to talk on it because i don't really know much about it but I, it don't interest in me in it none of that shit interests me i just focus on what i'm i'm getting at in it like that's fuck with that do you have do you have anything you want to talk about before we wrap up no oh, man um just just keep keep tuned man keep keep watching osm's channel i'm gonna keep dropping on there um I got some bangers coming. I got some good, good content coming, hopefully, um, and and a good few features. So just stay tuned, man. Other than that, thank you, man, for having me in it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hopefully, we see you in some acting soon as well. Yeah, hopefully, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna try to get involved with as much as I can. So anyone out there, shout me. You know what I'm Come saying? On. And can you drop your socials as well? Just last it. Socials. So TJ Stacks on Facebook and um. Mr. Underscore Stacks Underscore One Thousand on Instagram, and I think TikTok maybe either TJ Stacks or Mr. Stacks again. TikTok, we got T Stacks One Thousand. Yeah, see, that's my TikTok. So hit him up on that. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't use social media. <laughs> I can't even lie. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. But I, I'm I'm gonna start using them. Start getting back up there. Start getting some more some more viewers and some more followers, and hopefully start posting some better stuff. So. Yeah, man. Keep 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 tuned. Ooh, cool. Again, thank you, man, for having me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, man. Lovely.